in high definition. Good morning, I'm Juliana Valencia and welcome back, Jason. Yes, quick vacation went down to Florida mm -hmm. and it did rain a little bit. It did and then you came <laughs> back and it's still raining. And it's still raining here. You all have received a ton of more rain than what <laughs> I experienced on vacation. We did get a few sunny days in there. Hopefully you're having a fantastic Saturday morning. More rain today, as Juliana said, I'm checking a strong cold front that's going to cooler. All right, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. We begin with breaking news. Search and rescue crews are looking for a missing person on Kentucky Lake near Moore's Resort. This is video from last night as the U.S. Coast Guard and Marshall County Rescue Squad dispatched personnel and boats. No other information is being provided right now. We'll update this story on air and online as soon as we learn more. Continuing coverage now, devastating news for one of the biggest tourist areas in the United States. The Zika virus has spread to Miami Beach. Florida's governor confirms five new locally transmitted cases of the virus in the area. That brings the statewide total up to 36 people. Crews have been spraying pesticide from planes flying over Miami's Wynwood Arts District since earlier this month when Zika was first confirmed there. But the South Beach area poses a problem. Their director of the CDC says planes can't fly low enough among the area's high rises to spray and strong winds also hinder such flights. In addition, the large number of residents and visitors in the area will make it challenging to control the spread of Zika. Miami Beach Mayor Philip Levine says they're doing everything they can to stop the spread of the virus. We're going to do everything in our power. The CDC is warning all pregnant women to stay away from the Miami Beach area. There's also reports no local transmissions in any other states. Firefighters are making progress battling a huge wildfire in Southern California. Containment for the Blue Cut Fire in San Bernardino County jumped from 22% to 40% on Friday. Since Tuesday, the blaze has burned more than 37,000 acres and destroyed over 300 buildings, 96 of which were homes. 82,000 have had to be evacuated. Some are just now being allowed to return home. Investigators still haven't determined the cause of that fire. There's another wildfire burning right now in Santa Barbara, California. Since starting on Thursday, the Ray Fire has burned over 3,000 acres. As of this morning, no buildings have been lost in the blaze, and it's about 20% contained. In Northern California, the Clayton Fire in Lake County has burned nearly 4,000 acres and destroyed at least 175 homes. It's 65% contained as of this morning. Investigators have charged a man with arson related to that fire. Flood waters are starting to recede in Louisiana as signs of recovery are emerging. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards says FEMA will start paying for hotel rooms for storm victims and a disaster food stamp program begins Monday. The state will also begin consolidating shelters this weekend. The disaster has left 13 dead, prompted more than 30,000 rescues and left an estimated 40,000 homes damaged. President Obama will visit the flood damage on Tuesday. While on Martha's Vineyard, the president has received updates on the flooding situation. Some people are calling on him to end his Martha's Vineyard vacation early, including Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. He and running mate, running mate Mike Pence toured the flood damaged areas yesterday. During a rally in Michigan last night, Trump called out President Obama for not yet visiting the flood ravaged area while also pledging that the people of Louisiana would always have his support. And get down there. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton says that there shouldn't be any visits in the flood damaged areas just yet, saying the relief efforts doesn't need distractions. We'll have more on the campaign trail a little later, including why Trump thinks he's the better candidate for African Americans than Clinton. Here's what's happening now. American swimmer Jimmy Fegan is back home this morning. He's one of the four American swimmers, including Ryan Lochte, involved in the controversy over an alleged case of vandalism that was first called a robbery. To be allowed home, Fegan agreed to pay nearly $11,000 in restitution to a Brazilian charity. In a statement posted on Instagram, Lochte apologized, saying he should have been more careful and candid in how he described the events of that night. He went on to say, quote, I accept responsibility for my role in this happening and have learned some valuable lessons. 
The U.S. Olympic Committee says they will look into the actions of the swimmers while in Rio. They could face anything from probation to being kicked off the team. Here's Usain Bolt, three times three, the triple, triple. Usain Bolt finished his historic career by winning his ninth Olympic gold medal last night. His Jamaica team took gold in the 4 by 100 meter relay. It's Bolt's third gold medal of the Rio Olympics, giving him the legendary triple, triple title. That's three gold medals in three different Olympics. During a news conference after the race, Bolt said he's accomplished everything he wanted to do in track and field and that he's ready to set new goals outside of the sport. I have to make a new bucket list now. <laughs> Bolts went on to say if he did want to keep competing, he has about five more years left in him. You're invited to a special softball game today. This is video of organizers setting up yesterday for this year's Special Olympics West Kentucky Region 1 Softball Championships. Games will be played at the Lone Oak Ballpark starting at 9 this morning. 207 athletes on 15 teams will compete to qualify for the state level. The state championship will be in about a month. We're just getting started here on Local 6 Saturday. Coming up, what a new study says about what parents stress the most about when their kids head back to school. Plus, why there may be a shortage on pumpkin beer this fall. But first, how genetics may play a role in how long your life expectancy could be. Remember, you're watching WPSD Local 6 Saturday. Your breaking news and weather authority. Now let's take a look at the medal count. The United States continues their dominance in Rio with 105 medals, overall including 38 gold medals. Next best is China with 65, followed by Great Britain who has 60 medals. Rounding out the top five are Russia and Japan. Who's got the bigger muscles here, you or Juliana? I think I got them. You think she's got bigger muscles than you? Here, arm Correct. wrestle really fast. Hurry, <laughs> arm wrestle, let's see who's gonna win. Oh, oh, oh I don't know. Okay, You're always supposed to let the girl win, dude. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I'll let Juliana pump okay. this 3,485 times. One, One 3,485. Go to 30 pounds of pressure. Okay. Okay, keep going, keep going. Let's stop at 20 in case if the building blows up. Okay. okay. Go ahead, let go. Everybody's got their eyes on the bottle. Three, two, and there's the cloud. Local 6 Sunday in high definition. Good morning, I'm Juliana Valencia, and Trent, will we see more rain today? No. <gasps> yes. One day without rain chances, and what if I told you not only do we not have rain, okay. the sun's gonna come out. All right, put away an umbrella. <laughs> and then, big okay. cherry on top, lower humidity today. All three of them. Okay. How, much, how much are you liking this this morning? Happy Sunday. Yes. There you Finally, go. Finally, some nice weather across the area. Summertime conditions. Okay. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right. Well, thank you, Tripp. Yeah. The flooding in Louisiana has killed at least 13 people and damaged 60,000 homes. 102,000 people have registered for federal financial help. State offices will reopen on Monday. It's the same day debris removal begins. On Tuesday, President Obama will tour the damage. The donations you dropped off at Kirchhoff's Bakery in Delhi earlier this week for the flood victims are now in the hands of those who need them. Jenny Kirchhoff spoke to us yesterday about her hand delivering all of the cleaning supplies and food you gave. In Livingston Parish, she says many of the homes are still flooded and the distribution center at a local church was out of items until she arrived. She also wants to thank all of you who donated items. Kirchhoff plans to return to Paducah today. Here's what's new this morning on Local 6 Sunday. Tragedy in Turkey. At least 30 people died and another 94 people were wounded in a bomb attack targeting an outdoor wedding ceremony in the southeastern part of the country. Turkey's deputy prime minister said it appears to have been a suicide bombing. Turkey has been rocked by recent attacks either claimed by Kurdish militants or blamed on the Islamic State. In Rio, nine Australian Olympians were hauled into court, accused of a crime and fined more than $3,000 each. They were charged with falsifying documents, altered credentials they used when they went to see an Olympic basketball game. Australian Olympic leaders apologized to the court and the athletes were let go with a fine. 
A wild celebration in Brazil last night after the host country scored a historic win, its first ever gold medal in soccer, and it came in dramatic fashion. Star player Neymar nailed the winning penalty kick in a shootout following a 1-1 tie with Germany. The win gave Brazil a measure for revenge for their humiliating 7-1 defeat by Germany in the 2014 World Cup. $319 million. That's how much experts say the Barclay Dam has prevented in flood damages since it started operations 50 years ago. Here's a look at the ceremony dedicated to giving thanks for the dam's benefits and what it's meant to the area. Murphy says the project cost about $142 million back when it was built, a low price compared to the Kentucky Lock Addition Project, which began in 2000, costing $875 million. And here's what's happening now. The chimney fire in San Luis Obispo County, California has grown close to 20,000 acres. More communities were ordered to evacuate. The fire is also threatening the Hearst Castle. Officials say it's only about two miles away from the National Historic Landmark and surrounding buildings. As of now, winds are blowing the fire away from the castle, but bulldozers, trucks and firefighters are still digging containment lines around the castle as a precaution. New details about the body pulled from Kentucky Lake. Marshall County Deputy Coroner identified the man as David Marshall Thice from Indiana. Crews were called to the lake Friday night to search for Thice. Fourteen boats from the Marshall County Rescue Squad and the Coast Guard were part of the search. Sonar equipment helped crews find the body yesterday afternoon. Details about how Thice ended up in the water or a cause of death haven't been released. Deputy Coroner Barry Taylor tells us there will not be an autopsy. Continuing coverage, Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner is reacting to criticism on his veto to reopen the Hardin County work camp. While at the Illinois State Fair yesterday, Rauner said it would cost the Department of Corrections millions of dollars to repair the building after a fire, and it's not economical to keep it running. Hardin County. Browner went on to say no jobs were lost because of the closure and all employees who worked at the camp were reassigned to other facilities. A local six consumer alert. Some Hyundai and Mitsubishi car models are under recall. 2013 Hyundai Elantra models are being recalled because the brake pedal stopper pad can deteriorate, which could cause it to shift out of park without applying pressure to the brakes. The 2015-2016 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport and 2016 models of the Outlander are also under recall. The vehicles have a constant velocity transmission that can cause a delay in acceleration in certain driving conditions. Here's a cool feature. Some Audi cars will have a traffic light countdown that tells you how long it will take for a traffic light to change from red to green. Drivers will see the countdown on their console. The system wirelessly links cars to traffic management computers in certain U.S. cities. Company representatives are finalizing contracts and say they'll announce those cities soon. Three giant pandas celebrated their birthdays at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. yesterday. The zoo held a traditional Chinese birthday celebration for Bebe, Bobo, and Tian Tian. To celebrate Bebe's first birthday, symbolic objects were placed in front of the cub to foretell something about his future. Bebe's mother chose the red knot, indicating friendship and luck for the youngster. Coming up on Local 6 Sunday, Weather Authority Trent Okerson will have a complete check on your Sunday forecast. But first, what priceless memories a new homeowner uncovered in Texas. The time is now 6.10. You're watching the WPSD Local 6 Sunday. Your breaking news and weather authority with Juliana Valencia and weather authority Trent Okerson. You're watching Local 6 Sunday in high definition.